I've made an array of strange and conceptual projects on the channel, but I've come up with something that I think really pushes the boundary. Allow me to elaborate. It's no secret that I thoroughly enjoy creating paludariums and riparians that include marginal plant growth. In other words, using terrestrial plants in a way that their base and roots are planted completely underwater while the foliage remains above. Doing this makes it possible to make creative setups, but it's beneficial as well. Most notably, riparian plant growth is an effective means of aquarium filtration. I've done this in basic ways, like the blackwater riparium, or in more elaborate setups, like the bog orb riparian planters aquascape. These and many others are doing the same thing, but in a slightly different way. As I meditated on the concept, I thought to myself, how could I utilize this style of planting, but underwater? Is it even possible? Well, in this one, I'm gonna explore that idea and see if I can make it a reality. Before getting fully involved with this, I have to run an experiment. I wanna see how easily I can create a pocket of water underwater using a cloche container. In theory, I should be able to simply drop this into the aquarium and fill it with air to displace the water. I guess in that way, you could think of it as the reverse concept of the no opening or ecosphere. Obviously, getting this full of air underwater is as simple as dropping the container in with the air side down. This locks it within, and more can be added with the tube. This in mind, I can only assume that creating air pockets within the aquarium itself will be easy. There are two challenges though, but both have the same solution. The first being that this will float to the top without something anchoring it down. I also want it to be easily removed when it's time for maintenance. Here's my solution. I felt that the easiest way to go about doing this was drilling through the containers with a diamond tipped hole saw. Before drilling, I prepped the containers by placing a piece of foam in the opening. This will help keep things stable. I poured water on the glass and began drilling at an angle to create a divot. From there, I slowly tilted the drill and continued. Using this technique, I created two holes on each of the three containers. Simple enough except for the fact that I accidentally broke one of them. I'll use it for now to design the scape, but I'll replace it later. Anyway, I also need a few pieces of glass, which I cut out from a scrap piece I had lying around. Then I drilled a hole in each to line up with the holes on the cloche containers. With that addressed, I went back and sanded the edges so everything is safe to handle. Finally, I rinsed it all off, and here's the result. These holes should make it really easy to bring my entire idea to fruition. That will all make sense shortly. For now, I'll get this all into a custom-built aquarium. This is one of the tanks I built in the IKEA aquarium demonstration, and if you want to learn more about it, I'll link up a video in the description. I think this will be a great footprint to work in. Once I got an appropriate layout, I cleaned things off with isopropyl alcohol. This will remove oil and debris, and thus ensure silicone sticks to everything optimally. I applied silicone to the edges of the glass and pressed them into the tank adjacent to the holes on the cloche containers. I let it cure for 24 hours and swapped out the broken container. Even after all of that, this still might not make sense. Essentially what's gonna happen is that the holes on the pieces of glass that I silicone to the aquarium are gonna hook on to the holes that I created in the cloche containers. I have some stainless steel S hooks that in theory should allow me to do that, but I gotta get this filled up with water and see just exactly how it's gonna look. I expected this to work, but you never know for sure until you see it in action. Having the containers in this anchored position is key to the build, and it's cool to see. However, I don't want the anchor points to be visible in the completed design, so the next challenge to overcome is concealing them. I began by creating a base of aqua soil. Then I attempted to divide the background from the foreground with gray elephant skin stone. Of course, I had to account for the containers as I did. 
Anyway, I couldn't seem to get anything that I felt would work. So I filled the tank and anchored the containers to hopefully improve my odds. I continued with the same stones, but it just wasn't working out. I tried again with driftwood and other stones. This didn't work either. Maybe this would have been easier without the substrate. That was my hope at least. I vacuumed it out into a bucket for later use. Then I propped the containers up to the appropriate height with foam scraps. This time I tried scaping with brown elephant skin stone. Again, my goal was to divide the tank as described earlier. Working around the glass and utilizing a bad selection of stones proved to be very challenging. You'll see that I also included scrap pieces of egg crate light diffuser as I did to distribute the weight of the stones. It was at this point that I finally ended up with something viable. I felt it would all work best if I locked the stones together. Luckily I had epoxy left over from the saltwater tank that's perfect for the job. I mixed it up and applied chunks between the stones. I gave the epoxy time to set up so I wouldn't disturb it with the following steps. To ensure the substrate stays behind the rock barrier, I filled the gaps with polyester filter fluff. This is a quick solution that will retain everything behind the rocks. From here I could recreate the base layer of aqua soil from earlier. I evened it out as needed and capped it off with a layer of gravel. As I did, I made sure not to cover the anchor points. That said, I realized that I needed a way to secure the hook. I don't want to be digging through the substrate later on to find them. I looked through my supplies and a modified airflow valve worked perfectly. To keep the rock wall from appearing one dimensional, I added spiderwood branches throughout. The fine textures helped break it up. I later secured these to the stones with super glue gel hidden with sand. Even after all of that, there are a few areas in front of the stones that appear unsightly. Some java moss will make it really easy to hide these gaps. Then I filled in the front with fine white sand. This really brought things together, and especially once I added the containers. Time for the terrestrial plants. I'm keeping it basic with a single plant per cloche. I had to trim them slightly for the optimal fit. I added a few stones up top as well. Although this looks neat, I can't anchor the containers without water. Unfortunately, the water got cloudy in the process, but it should clear up in no time. Until then, I'll get the containers. It was really weird to watch the plants dry underwater as I put these over them. I should probably also mention that it's perfectly fine for the plants to have been submerged for a brief period of time. I added more air to the containers as needed. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to pull this off, but it's an interesting sight to see. What do you think? Even though I have these terrestrial plants, I want to make it a proper aquarium with aquatics. I've selected an array of easy plants like Hygrophila and Cryptocorini that should quickly fill in the space. After the water cleared up, here's how things are looking. You'll see that I've included a frosted film on the back and I've also added a hang on back filter with seasoned biological media. Overall, I think it's a really neat looking setup and something I believe will work long term if I decide to keep it around. The plant bubbles are essentially just terrariums where the plant's base and roots are nestled within the aquarium. I know that terrariums and ripariums work long term if the appropriate plants are used, so I have good reason to think that this would be the case here as well. If I had to make a complaint though, you can't fully see the plants because of condensation on the inside of the glass. The plants don't care, but it does take away from the overall aesthetic. It will also look better once the aquatic plants mature, but that's to be expected and will take a little bit of time. 
Until then, I want to see it with some fish. I decided to dismantle the minimalist Mountain Islands Paludarium, and the glow light Dan used from that tank will be perfect for this one, along with some Nerite snails. And thus concludes this build. I knew it would be a challenging one, and I honestly think it's one of my most ambitious projects to date. I'm curious to know what you think though. Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.